Hi, my name is Samantha and welcome to today's video. Today we're going to be talking about signing up for new shows. Let's get into it. If you haven't already watched my video about how to avoid scams online when signing up for shows, go ahead and check out that video. I'll have it linked down below. That being said, I got a lot of questions on that video and I've gotten a lot of questions since that video about how do you sign up for shows, how do you find shows, and how do you avoid scams. So being that I'm in a new area, I'm gonna walk you through how I'm going about the process of finding new shows. So the first thing that I did to help make sure that I'm one, gonna sign up for a good show, and two, not gonna give my money to some scammer online, is that I found a couple websites that had a lot of different shows on them so that it was more likely that they were legit shows. Um, I'll have them linked down below. Uh, so they were lists of different shows. What I did is I took that list and then I either um, just by reading the name or by clicking on the description and reading a little bit more about the event, if it explicitly said that it was an art or it, if they had arts and crafts um, or if I thought that it's something similar to something I've done in the past, then I added it to my list. And so I just made like a rough list here. I wrote down the months and I wrote down the days and I just wrote down some shows. These ones down here that I highlighted those specifically said arts and crafts or for example these three in november are at um convention centers nearby so that's something else that i did is i went and i looked up the convention convention centers near me or expo centers near me and i tried looking on their websites for their events now the convention centers around me their websites weren't that great so i wasn't able to navigate them very easily um that didn't work out very well for me but i have had success in the past that way for example, in Virginia, if you're uh, near the Dulles Expo Center, you can go on the Dulles Expo Center's website and you can look at their events on their event calendar. Um, this isn't, didn't work as well for me here, but that's one way you could do it. So then once I made this rough list, then I entered it into my, um, into my phone so that I could copy and paste. And then I started building the list from there. So for example, um, I typed in the keywords that I had written down in the date and I pulled up the event. In a best, say, best case scenario, you would find the 2023 event, like the current event. However, in quite a few cases, I only found the 2022 event, which I would then send an email to the um, email on file. Uh, in, in most cases, for example, um, this one, uh, Summer Fair at Coney Island. So the email should be Summer Fair at coneyisland.com or summerfair coneyisland at gmail.com something like that it shouldn't be bob smith at gmail.com don't email that person now if it is like a smaller event like it's a church event or something like that you might be emailing a specific person but in most cases it should be a professional email and it should match the event so i went through and i gathered all the correct dates the times, the addresses, I verified because I don't know this area. Uh, I can't tell by just reading the address. I verified that they're all within a reasonable distance. Um, and then I wrote down, you know, how much the booth fee was. If it was listed, I wrote down um, if there was an application fee deadline. So now I can like start going through and applying for stuff. Quite a few, they didn't have the application listed. So like I said, I just had to send an email. Once I sent that first email, I was then just clicking the forward include attachments and updating the email to reflect the person that I was sending it to. Um, so I was just reusing the same email, just updating the information each time. Uh, and I included my website as well as my name. I personally do not include my phone number. I don't want people to have my phone number. I do not want you to call me. Don't call me. I'm not going to answer the phone. So I personally like to communicate via email. Um, now, if you are a phone person, you could include your phone number, but I don't like doing that. Um, and then as I'm going through, there's certain things like, for example, there's a show that I found in May that it says that, um, like it's a non-refundable, it's rain or shine. So that's good to know. And then, um, there's another one that I saw, uh, where was it? Uh, so there was, um, for example, I had written down, uh, three of actually four events here on the same date, for example, September 10th. So the first event, when I pulled it up, I 
did not find the information for this year, so I sent an email. The second event, I did find the information for this year, and the deadline is March 31st, and uh, you have to submit your insurance as well. And it says that there's no refunds. And then the next event I found, uh, I could only find the Facebook page from last year. So again, I had to send an email. And then the fourth event, I couldn't find it at all. So that one I ended up just deleting. And that's going to happen. That's why I wrote down multiple events. I don't expect to do multiple events in one day. However, you don't want to limit yourself right from the start. Because what happens if I email one of these people? I have three events written down for that day. If I email one of those people and they say, oh, my event's already full. Okay, who cares? Go to the next one. So don't limit yourself right at the start. Oh, I already have one written down. Who cares? Just write it down. Plus, if you need it for next year, you already have that information. So like I said, I just continued going through the list. Um, I haven't gone through the list all the way because there's a lot more shows September, October, November. But um, I got to September. I was working on September. Um, and I'll have the information linked down below that I found. There's an event that I found for June that today is the application deadline. So I'm glad I'm going through and doing this because quite a few of these events, the deadlines are sometime in February or March. So you do have to apply early. And you have to know if you're doing these shows or not. Now, that being said, like I said, I don't know how November and December are going to go down for me. So I'm going to just apply for the shows that I think I can do that have a reasonable fee that if I do have to drop out, then I just lose that cost. But I do want to pile on more shows earlier in the year. So I might be doing like two shows a month up to that point instead of like last year, how I did every every single weekend in November, and December, I had a show. So I'm not certain. We'll see how it goes. And I have been getting responses from the emails that I've been sending out. I just got one just now. Uh, and I wrote, I also um, included like the website. And then, like I said, the booth fee, if there was booth fees for these events. Let me know if there's any other questions that come to mind that I can help you with in the comments down below. Uh, that's how I go about uh, finding shows. I don't use Facebook. Facebook is the biggest place that you can get scammed. So I try to not do that. I wanna go on the person's official website. Most shows have an actual website. It should be, you know, summerfair at coneyisland.com. It should be the website of the name of the event. And that's how you know it's one, a legit event. And then two, like it's, worth your time like if it's such a small event it might not even be worth your time that being said it's not like that these shows are my complete show list for the year I just definitely want to get some sh some shows on the calendar so that I can start preparing for them I can make sure that I have things scheduled but the best best way to hear about shows is word of mouth because then you can hear from somebody else hopefully with a similar product or similar price point as you Find out if that show is worth it and if you should sign up for it, if the event organizer is worth it or not. Do they communicate well? You know, there's a lot of things that you can't tell from online. Online is not a great way to find shows. Um, I don't trust very much online. Um, it's very, it's, 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 I just, I don't trust people and I don't trust, uh, you know, finding shows online, but this is the best way that I've found doing it. If you have any, have any tips or suggestions, please leave them in the comments down below. Please don't forget to like and subscribe and have a wonderful day.